Okay, so let's start this lecture with amazing Switzerland or meravigliosa Svizzera, wundervolle Schweiz, Swiss magnifique, wunderbare Schweizer, all the languages that are spoken in Switzerland and the official greeting is Grüzi uh, in the German speaking part. Uh, let's start by just having a short look at this amazing country. Actually, my lecture is over. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> you have seen it all. <laughs> One minute and uh, no, it's really, it is a place that uh, has so much to offer and is easy to travel around, is just nature and, uh, and beauty. Uh, it's difficult to top. It's a little bit cliche maybe. Uh, it's one of the wealthiest country in the world is uh, a variety of landscapes is uh, easygoing people so it's just a place that is I think really worth a visit and uh, there is where I want to take you and uh, Switzerland is a landlocked country bordering Germany Austria and Italy to the uh, 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 Germany and Austria to the east Italy and uh, to the east uh, and to the south France uh, to the um, west and the northwest and we are going to start our discovery from the south part the uh, italian speaking area of uh, switzerland in a town called lugano then we are going to uh, go by the gotthard pass so going towards the north we are going to get on a train that is the gletscher uh, uh, express train that connects uh, the uh, incredible little, uh, very posh uh, winter sport uh, resort of St. Moritz and takes you passing by Andermatt where we will get on the train all the way down to the Matterhorn at the little village of Zermatt. From there, we will go then uh, to the French speaking part of Switzerland uh, at Lac Léman uh, or Lake Geneva. We will discover about uh, chocolate and cheese then uh, uh, in Emmental, and we will finish our loop uh, at the beautiful uh, town of Lucerne. We uh, start now with uh, the very iconic uh, Swiss flag, and uh, I put two flags uh, close to each other. By the way, the uh, uh, traditional original flag of Switzerland is square, so it's not rectangular, it's square. But we have two uh, flags uh, close to each other. The one to your left is Red Cross in a white flag. This is the official flag of the Red Cross organization that you all know, uh, based also in Switzerland uh, uh, and is their flag since, uh, flag since uh, 1864. The one to your right red flag and white cross is the Switzerland national flag since, nine, uh, since 1848. The story of Switzerland is much older, uh, but what we connect with these flags is something of our recent history. And that is actually, uh, uh, Switzerland is uh, famous all around the world because they have a neutral status uh, concerning war times. And so it's a kind of the country where people go when they have to try to find a peace treaty or they do international meetings, international organizations are in Switzerland. But 
uh, what is interesting is that something that Switzerland exported uh, throughout the centuries were actually soldiers. And these were mercenary soldiers. The picture to your left uh, is uh, a scene that happened in August the, the, the 10th, 1792 at the Palais, Palais de la Tuileries in France during the French Revolution. Uh, the army that was, like, let's say, the, uh, the personal bodyguards of the royals uh, at the Tuileries Palace, like Marie Antoinette, uh, were a Swiss mercenary corps, the Swiss guards, uh, in this um, uh, Tuileries Palace attack more than 600 of them died. And for example, one other uh, corpse that we know that is famous of all over the world of the Swiss army um, is a special guard, the Swiss guards, that is the guards of the Pope since 1506. So is uh, uh, the longest, the oldest military units in service in operation and continuous operation, the Swiss guard. Um, so it's interesting that it's a peaceful country, a neutral country, export is then, uh, let's say, were mercenaries. A couple of like uh, inform information about uh, Switzerland, uh, I don't want to just make it very long. It's a, it's, a feder uh, it's a confederation of what we do not call state, we call them cantons in the number of 26. And what is interesting is that because of this bordering, it's a landlocked country with more than 60% of mountain and forest as the surface, as its territory, but the neighbor countries kind of have an influence in the characteristic of these cantons. So we have also four official languages, although the Swiss German is the largest by population and so is the, the most spoken language and Grützi, is uh, the greetings form that you will use in the Swiss German part of, uh, of Switzerland. But other two part languages that are official are in their cantons that they belong to are the French speaking area, the Italian speaking area and Romance that is um, uh, an old uh, uh, language spoken in very small cantons area of the mountain towards the uh, north uh, north uh, east of uh, of Switzerland, um, one thousand five hundred lakes, um, and is uh, a country that is famous for chocolate, cheese, banking system, watches. But is one of the wealthiest country in the world, and it's a very nice country as well because of the landscape. Very diverse. I would like to start now from the south. Uh, Lugano uh, is the Italian speaking part. Uh, um, and uh, as you see also from the red uh, vegetation, you see some palm trees, some uh, umbrella pine trees that you know maybe from Mediterranean area. You see to the right some olive trees, very interesting uh, uh, kind of, of, of trees and vegetation. But this is still an alpine setting. Alps are, is this mountain chain that is uh, quite high, but in this area there is a kind of a microclimate, so it can be really mild. As you see people here when the sun is shining and uh, can be really warm and pleasant, people go swimming there. Um, you have some uh, uh, small little uh, villages by the lake that looks like you could be in Tuscany. So this is a quite special spot. And uh, to me, uh, this area Lugano is family, is home. Uh, my sister lives there. Uh, you can see her to the top uh, left picture with myself at the Lake Lugano. Her name is Mara. And to the right, she's there with her, her son, my nephew Andreas. Uh, she is Italian, moved to, to Switzerland, married a Swiss, uh, a Swiss German, and uh, now they live in Lugano, uh, and Andreas uh, served the, the army, uh, which is an interesting service because uh, in the, uh, also if it's a peaceful country, it's a neutral country, they do have their own army, and all uh, male citizens who are uh, at the age of 18 have to join the army. If they study, they can postpone it. And Andreas did it and uh, he made it longer because he actually was in a special corp that was mainly uh, about like um, protection in case of uh, natural catastrophe. So he was training a lot. And 
the beautiful girl you see with him on the picture, his girlfriend, she is uh, she just graduated uh, as a nurse. And in this time of COVID-19 emergencies, she actually was uh, asked to be in so to be directly in one of these uh, COVID-19 units, which is a very challenging job for somebody that starts. But because of Switzerland having neighbors to many countries, uh, they actually uh, uh, had a lack of uh, of um, medics uh, um, workers uh, um, because uh, a lot of them are commuting either for Germany from France or from Italy. So. Uh, that was one of the problems why Switzerland, you might have noticed, had very high numbers during these uh, COVID-19 emergencies. We live now the south part of uh, uh, the uh, Italian part of Switzerland, going towards the Gotthard Pass, uh, the same way the Roman did. Uh, this was also the trade way going from, the, uh, from Italy all the way up, crossing the mountain, as you see, when it, where, where there is a valley, then the Romans would follow the valley. And... Uh, uh, we climb it uh, by using, of course, you, of course, we use now the road, go up, uh, and it's an amazing landscape. You can do it only when the snow uh, already melted or so from the springtime, um, because we want to go to the north. Um, but uh, there is another way, and this is this tunnel, uh, Gotthard Basis Tunnel, uh, 10 miles long. Uh, but they also have extra tunnels that are for, uh, for, for transportation, like for trains, or you, they can put semi-heavy um, transportation on the train and pass this tunnel. So this is the easiest way, of course. And we reach then uh, Andermatt and we go to the Gletscher Express train. <laughs> The Gletscher Express, St. Moritz, Davos, Zermatt, uh, is an incredible, uh, uh, really enjoyable train ride. Uh, the train system in Switzerland works amazingly. It's uh, also an incredible achievement of, art, uh, of engineering because of 60% mountain, you can imagine. Um, quite expensive, but it takes you all the way to Zermatt, which is this small little village by the Matterhorn. The Matterhorn is an iconic mountain, it's not the highest mountain in Switzerland, the highest one is the Monte Rosa. Uh, but the, uh, for example, this little village is just pedestrian, so you can just enjoy it. You arrive by train, you get into your beautiful hotel or your accommodation, you take a hike, you take a walk, uh, uh, is just uh, something to really to enjoy. And of course, then the most amazing meal you can have in Switzerland is cheese fondue. Uh, also for people that do not really love cheese, it's an experience, it's rich, it's tasty, and it's really worth it. And we will talk about cheese a little later on. We now move to the uh, French-speaking area, to Lake Geneva, Lac Léman, uh, French-speaking area. Uh, again, an interesting setting. You see the mountains, but you see also grapes, grapes growing. It's an area uh, where Switzerland is producing amazing uh, wines, especially white wines. Some, you can visit some wineries and uh, uh, some of them uh, have also these, in, uh, these tools that you can have a look at. Uh, weekly markets um, here, for example, it was uh, I was there in uh, uh, autumn. Uh, wonderful mushrooms. You see all the different uh, names in French, of course. Uh, uh, jams like uh, fraise, uh, uh, rosiné, abricot, uh, miel, uh, honey. Uh, incredible saucisse. Uh, um, I'm a vegetarian, but uh, nevertheless, when I see these things, it's just mouth watering. Anyway. But this is an amazing place and uh, this area has a lot to offer. This Lake Geneva has such a variety in such a short uh, space, like uh, Chateau du Chillon, uh, which is around almost 1000 years old, at the water, in the water. Incredible people lived uh, also and settled down and decided to stay in Switzerland, such as, for example, the amazing Charlie Chaplin. You can go and visit his house that became a museum. 
I went to uh, visit him at his graveyard. Uh, I like him a lot, um, made incredible moving. Uh, one, for example, The Great Dictator, if you haven't seen it, just go and have a look. Uh, other musician, contemporary music, musician that, that really made the history of rock uh, music, the queen, the legend, uh, Freddie Mercury. And there is a special uh, song and a special band that also is connected to Lake Geneva. And for this, I'm just calling now my, my, my guest assistant, Matthias, because he just wants to talk about it uh, himself. Where are you? <laughs> Probably you hear this most famous guitar riff ever. Huh? Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple. The song is very simple. In 1972, uh, Deep Purple were in uh, Montreux to record a new record, which is a machine head, by the way. <laughs> and um, what happened is that at the same time, uh, Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention played at the um, casino. And some of the fans set uh, the thing by chance on fire. So the casino was on fire and the smoke was coming over the lake. So it became smoke on the water. That's it. Okay, so music is, uh, of course, then uh, uh, here is the, the lyrics, smoke on the water on the Lake Geneva shoreline to make records with a mobile, we didn't have much time. Smoke on the water, so, uh, but uh, Lake Geneva hosts also an incredible famous um, um, jazz uh, festival that is called Montreux Jazz Festival. This year, by the way, canceled because of coronavirus. Uh, Lake Geneva has the name because also of the uh, major, main, most important town on the lake, Geneva, uh, uh, Genf in German, uh, Gen in French, Ginevra in Italian. And uh, in Geneva, uh, there are the headquarters of many uh, worldwide um, organizations that uh, are connected also to this fact that uh, Switzerland being neutral guarantee uh, a certain uh, status, uh, such as the United States, uh, United Nations. I have your list at uh, the World Health Organization, Red Cross, uh, World Meteorological Organization, World Economic Forum, Doctors Without Borders, Médecins Sans Frontier, uh, and also Geneva was the uh, the town where there was the Geneva Convention from the 1920. There were different uh, treaties um, done to uh, define the um, agreement of, on the basic rights of uh, uh, prisoners of wars. Um, another important town at Lake Geneva, uh, at Lac Le Mans, is Lausanne, a uh, small town, uh, but important because in Lausanne we have the uh, headquarters of the Olympic um, Games organ organization. So uh, a lot of things happening in this small little country on a, a worldwide important level. Not far away from uh, uh, Geneva, uh, Lake Geneva, uh, we can go to visit the Maison Cahier uh, because uh, when we think about Switzerland, we think about chocolate. Chocolate in Switzerland, uh, in, Ger in, German, in Swiss German, they call it chocolate. Chocolate, uh, milk chocolate. And Monsieur Cahier, together with Monsieur uh, Nestle, that you might know, um, because now this company, Nestle company, has become a worldwide company controlling a lot of things, also the one we do not know about it. Um, they were uh, working, Monsieur, Monsieur Cahier, Monsieur Nestle, they were working with. Uh, um, uh, not only with chocolate, but uh, also with uh, uh, milk powder. And uh, that is the creation of uh, the uh, Swiss chocolate, is the combination of cocoa beans uh, with uh, uh, milk powder to create milk chocolate. Uh, they do not produce any chocolate. Of course, chocolate is a tropical plant, so it comes from uh, abroad, uh, but uh, they, of course, produce a lot of milk. And with this uh, combination, they could make just like uh, a world uh, famous product that we know and enjoy everywhere. The Swiss themselves, they uh, consume around 20 pounds of uh, uh, chocolate a year, but we do not eat that much Swiss chocolate around the world. There are some famous brands, uh, 
but uh, they do not export that much. Huh? Uh, if you go to the Maison Cahier, you can also do a workshop and uh, produce your own chocolates. But not far away from there, uh, you enter then the area of cheese. And we go now to visit Emmental and we learn something more about the Emmental cheese. Okay, a yodeling piece of cheese. <laughs> That's not bad. We are back now with the loop and we are back to the Swiss, uh, German Swiss parts uh, and uh, in Emmental. And Emmental is one of the most famous. It's by export the first cheese uh, uh, in, that the Swiss exports around the world. They produce more than 450 different kinds of cheese. Uh, Emmental um, is an incredible work because uh, they start to make just one wheel. They start with 330 gallons of milk to produce one wheel that is up to 220, 225 pounds, age up to 12 months. Um, and uh, uh, it's just an amazing process that you can see, uh, smell and taste. Uh, in the United States, you have a lot of Swiss cheese uh, that is not Swiss, it's made in, uh, uh, in the United States. This is because uh, the Swiss, uh, uh, they were not really that aware that this would be uh, a name that they had to brand and to protect. So Swiss cheese is now, uh, maybe the Swiss cheese you have tasted in, in the United States has nothing to do with an original Swiss cheese. So we really take you to the experience when you come with us to visit Switzerland, that is what you have to try. And uh, Switzerland is also a, a mountain uh, country with a lot of tradition. You have heard yodeling. Yodeling, that is a tradition that is based uh, uh, on, uh, let's say it's, uh, it's this uh, kind of singing uh, that uh, uh, had a purpose that was uh, at first, for example, uh, in the Alps area was for the um, herders to call their stocks or to communicate with others, as well as the alpine horns, uh, to, uh, that is an instrument that uh, typical also of the mountain area and uh, made out of wood, a soft wood and uh, used also, uh, it could be also a substitution sometimes, a signal uh, instrument or also a substitution, for example, with uh, um, church bells. But uh, I want to take you to the world record of Alpine horn playing at the mountain. And this is something that happened 2013, not far away from the Matterhorn. Alpine horn, you can uh, divide it in three pieces and put it in a backpack and take it up with you to the mountain. So they don't have to carry it all so big all the way up to the mountain. We now uh, come to the end of our uh, loop around Switzerland to uh, uh, one of the most uh, beautiful uh, town in Switzerland, uh, located by the uh, Vier Waldstätter See, the four cantons uh, uh, forest cantons uh, lake, uh, Lucerne, Luzerne uh, in uh, Swiss German, 
an amazing area, uh, also the birthplace of the Swiss Confederation and uh, uh, iconic uh, landmarks like the um, Kapellenbrücke, the Chapel Bridge, uh, or then the um, Lions Monument uh, that, uh, by the way, is a memorial to the fallen soldier of the Tuileries Palace in 1792, the Swiss guards that died there. Um, also incredible is to see when we, we, we went up to, to the Gotthard Pass, but if you would have taken the 10 miles long tunnel, this picture to your right, that is the head of the drilling machine that made the tunnel possible. So you can visit this, it's also in a museum there. Um, beautiful uh, historical city center, very easy to walk around, very safe. Uh, beautiful also uh, paintings on, on the, the old buildings and a lot of shopping. Uh, of course, uh, Switzerland is a wealthy country also because they know exactly how to make money and they make also quite uh, cool uh, um, souvenirs. Uh, Swiss army knife, famous all over the world. Uh, I go around with a Swiss army knife and a Leatherman, so I have the two. Uh, Swiss watches, not only the high-end uh, like uh, Rolex, which is the most famous one that we, we might know, but also different ones, and chocolate, of course. So it's really a beautiful place where to go around and just enjoy. But we always have time for an amazing excursion, and this is to the Mount Pilatus. This is 7,000 feet high. Uh, it's possible to do it throughout the year. And uh, you can see from up above uh, what uh, landscape you have on one side, the large lake, you can imagine the size of this incredible lake, Fierwaldstätter See, so you can imagine 1,500 lakes in Switzerland, it's a lot, but you see also the mountainside. And from the springtime, when uh, the snow is melting, it's possible to do what it's called the golden round trip. This is a full day, actually, because you go up from, if you look at the map, you go up from Kriens uh, to the uh, right hand side of the map by cable car. At first you take small little, I call them the eggs, so like a, a small little um, like cars, and then you go to a middle station, then you get the amazing cable car up to the top, Pilatus Klum. Then you go down by one of the steepest, if not the steepest train rides uh, um, to Alpnachstadt. And there, to the end of the picture to your uh, left hand side, you take a boat ride and make it back to Lucerne. It's just amazing. And if you do it with nice weather, look here is a picture of beautiful girls of uh, one of our groups. And you can just see as far as 50 miles. Uh, uh, and it's just amazing. So uh, a place where we always love to go. And I just take you now for a little ride with cable car and train. So in this case, we will take the train to go downhill, huh? but it's as steep as to go uphill. That's it from my side. I thank you very, very much. Danke und auf Wiedersehen. I hope to see you and to go with you around in der Schweiz, in Switzerland. Thank you very much.